are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. God, Matthias. This is this is great. I love that everything's just ready. Everything's right? just set up and it, just go. Unlike Boop. last time, remember you, you came in uh <laughs> in little jam room in my apartment yeah. complex and we yeah. were carting everything in there. Yeah. Hey, however you gotta get it done. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's so hard to <laughs> it's so hard to stay consistent with this if you don't have something like this. Yeah. And like the whole process of like setting it up in that room was like it was like an added two hours on both ends of doing the hour and a half podcast. Down. So it was like, if you're like, hey, do you want to do the podcast? It's like, I have to go in my head. Okay, yeah, but it's going to be six hours. It's going to be a whole day ordeal yeah. to get it him in and out. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's almost yeah. like uh, having to, you know, prepare everything in a commissary. Oh, and my then God, take yeah. Take it over to a different location where you serve every day and then <laughs> pack everything up and then and take it back at the end of the night. Who in their right mind would do this, something like that? Yeah, definitely not for any longer than a couple of years. <laughs> definitely not for seven whole years. Yeah, absolutely not. Hell, yeah. Well, we're I think we're going, right? Oh, yeah. We've been going. Oh, we've been going. Evan yeah, Leroy. Yeah. My man, Evan Leroy, he's back. He's back in the real stew. That's two, that's two for two on high fives today. Mm -hmm. Two for two. Um, what's going on, brother? How are you? I'm very good. I uh, specifically with the high fives, I've been trying to like I target bullseye the palm, like the center mm. palm, and I've been really trying to get the daps. So all straight. your high fives are popping like that, or I'm, a higher percentage of high fives are popping right now. I mean, that's the first thing you do in any like meeting or setting. Yeah, you wanted to. Bar barbecue, the barbecue community and the like comedy community. I've noticed big. It's a big high five. Dat. You got to figure that out. Yeah, big hugs. Big, big hugs uh, and high fives. Family. Yeah, yeah. Scoot that just a little closer to, or you can scoot closer to the table. Whatever's yeah. easier for you. That's sure. That's good. Um, hell yeah, dude. Well, last time you were on, it's your second time. You're second one time. of the one of the few return guests. One of, one of the first few return guests in Thanks the new in the new back. stew. Of course, dude. Uh, thanks for coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were here last time, <clears throat> the brick and mortar was still kind of a distant, we don't know when, we're trying to work on it, and yeah. and it was kind of in that weird limbo that you were in for so long, which we'll get there, but it, it's been open now. Yes. The brick and mortar has been open. Everyone's yeah. excited about it. Yeah. The people love it. They do. The reviews are great. Um, how how long have you guys been fully open and, and rolling now? This the at the end of this week it'll be like three months. Three whole months. Yeah, that went by quick, pretty fast. But they've all felt very distinct. Like each month, like March was very different from April, which was very different from May. Okay, so before we get it too deep into it, I, I do want a refresher because I think a lot of people, there's new a lot of new subscribers and listeners on the podcast yeah. since I had you on the first time, and I don't know how many people go back and check out the right. the Lower Fi podcast, but can you give us kind of just a, you could do like the quick version or the medium-sized version, whatever, of like how you got into <clears throat> owning a restaurant, basically, and how, yeah. you, how you, and then we can go from opening the truck to the, the brick and mortar where we're yeah. at today. Okay. So I grew up in Austin. I was usually very obsessed with food, what we were cooking, you know, in the house, what my parents were cooking for dinner that night, what my dad was cooking in the backyard, which was a lot of ribs and barbecue and stuff. We were eating barbecue, not that frequently, but it was just kind of ubiquitous growing up here in Austin. It's everywhere. You have it pretty frequently. Like, people eat it for lunch all the time. It's at, like, big events. It feeds a lot of people at events, so you see it a lot of those kind of things. And when I left Austin after I graduated to go to college in Florida State to live in New York City for a while, I missed I missed barbecue a lot, and so I kind of gravitated toward it. Mm. started working at a place in New York called Hill Country Barbecue. Then I moved back to Austin, worked at a place called Freedman's, opened that up, and worked there for four years, and that... Collected a lot of people who yeah. um, are, you know, Killing making it. big waves in the barbecue industry right now. People from Goldie's. Uh, Which explain Chris. Goldie's for people that don't know. They're number <laughs> one on the top 50 list, yes, right? Yes. In Texas. Currently holding the number one position on the 2021 top 50 Texas monthly barbecue joint list is Goldie's. 
two of the owners, Jalen and uh, Lane, worked with me at Friedman's. Brad from Chud's obviously worked with me. Oh, I always Friedman's. forget. That's the fourth yeah. one that I forget. I'm like, who's yeah. the fourth one? There's because I know the briskets guy. His, uh, yeah, Chris uh, with briskets and Joel from Teddy's. And Joel, okay. And actually, Kareem uh, worked there for a little while too. Oh, really? That was after I left, but yeah. just star studded. They yeah. didn't know what they had, bro. I know. I know. They didn't. Was it there was any? A good place. Was there any way? Is there any alternate universe where Friedman's like works out? Like whatever, whatever was happening there that made you guys kind of want to quit or and go all do your own thing. Was there is there an alternate universe where like all those great people working together makes that place great? Because it's well, like that it place was, didn't work I out for some really, reason, right? It really was great for the time that we were there, but for other reasons, yeah, I just don't think it worked out yeah. for everyone. And that's a lot of big personalities. If all of those people were eventually going to do their own thing anyway, right? Um, which you know is, we'll get to now. With this current team and like right. how so much potential so, there. So too. you guys, so you branched off and you decided to open a truck, right? Yeah. When, so when did you meet Sawyer at the Lewis? Same time that I moved back to Austin, we started hanging out with my friends from high school, which were uh, Nathan and Sawyer's friends from college, and so they moved back from Colorado to Houston and would come in town and hang out, and we would meet and talk at parties about doing something together, and then. Both of us were eventually like ready to do that. They moved to Austin. Sawyer started working at Contigo, which was a really popular restaurant here at the time. Um, Nathan started working for Austin Beer Works. Um, and then we, after a little bit of time, decided to open the food truck. Just, and then that gathering, was in 2017. just gathering data, basically, yeah. like on all fronts, yeah. on how to run all these different <coughs> businesses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, how do you, how do you keep a business partnership? like you know healthy and successful because you guys you and sawyer have been doing this for how many years now total like eight uh we started in 2017 so this would be yeah the eighth year of that yeah and it's probably not all been you know bubble gum and gum drops right? i would say for the most part it's been it's very been a, positive okay. that's good there's only you know every relationship regardless of whether it's a you know parent to a child or you know, husband to wife or friend to friend, there's always like snags and relationships yeah. and the things that you have to do or like work on that and like work out, you know, and discuss and just like try to come to some sort of compromise. And, um, you know, that's no different with a business partnership. I have like implicit trust within both of them. And I would assume that the same of myself from them. Right. Uh, and I think that's kind of how you have to go about it. And then it's on us to, you know, it's on me to fill, to live up to that, to fulfill that trust that they have in me to right. kind of do as much as I possibly can for the good of the ownership. It group. comes from a place of not wanting to let each other down, really, Big at time. the end of the day. Yeah. Because if yeah. you, if, if you, something that you come up with is too crazy and too expensive and it's going to take yeah. too many hours to, uh, you know, John Bates on the podcast we did, he, he was making jokes about pickling his own mustard seeds. Yeah, I listened to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it, yeah. it's like, you're, it's up to you to be like, like, you know, this is going to let Sawyer down because it's going to be too expensive and it's not going to yeah. work out or whatever. Yeah. So we're just going to move on to the next idea. Right. And so does part of that come from staying in your respective lanes too a little bit? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Like but knowing when to be like, okay, not my, that's not, that's not what I, Agreed that I was going to take over, so I'm not. Yes. I'm not going to try to step on her toes when it comes to, uh, you know, expenses or what, or you know, running the money or wh I mean, whatever it is that you know. I know yeah. she does like a ton of different administrative, and I I don't really fully grasp the yeah. <laughs> the, the gravity of what she does, but I know it's crucial yeah. to. Yeah, it's it's pretty much everything. Yeah. Um it's, it's like it's everything but cook, and then sometimes she cooks. Yeah, so. <laughs> that, that's that's kind of how it is. What is there anything on the menu that was purely from her mind, or or uh, um, or at least started with like an idea from her that you were like, okay, yeah, let's. I mean, I think she's very like plain about like, look, we need to have these couple things on the menu. Like, yeah. we need to have like a couple shareable items. We need to have a cut like a salad. We need to have like a couple things for like people who are, you know, not like big barbecue dudes. Right, because she's not. She's not really like a huge super into barbecue. Even so, admittedly, she's like well, not, she is now. But she's she, at first she has said that she wasn't like obsessed yeah. with barbecue the same way as like a lot of business owners that are. 
in yeah, the barbecue. Yeah, she understands that this business needs to be a neighborhood restaurant, that we need to be able to feed the people who are all around here and that we need to exist on more than just like a, you know, weekend lunch yeah. uh, time. It needs to be accessible plane. for people that maybe yes. aren't, aren't that into barbecue or just start trying to get it, starting to get into it. Maybe right. get them in. Maybe you guys are gateway. Yeah. Maybe you guys are gateway barbecue. Yeah. I think that might be what you guys are kind of now, especially yeah. just like, cause there's so much different stuff on the menu, you know, and we'll get yeah. there. But so, <clears throat> so with the truck, uh, you guys open the truck, everything's going good. You make the barbecue list. We're doing a, a quick version. If you want the longer version, they can go listen to the old mm -hmm. pod. But so how long from opening the truck to opening the brick and mortar was it? Seven years. Seven seven years of operating. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's a long time. And how many times were you supposed to open the brick and mortar and it fell through for whatever reason? At least five. Five different times. Yeah. With location or investors. What, so one, yeah. Something like that, it would just yeah. fall through. Yeah, it was all different reasons for locations, uh, and then one of the reasons was COVID. Oh, right. Yeah. That old chestnut. Yeah, that one. <laughs> it's in it was such a weird place that it's, like, far enough away to where we can be like, man, I remember, but it's kind of still not far enough away to where we can, like, make really good jokes about it. Yeah. You know? It's well, <laughs> I, everybody acted so dumb. I know, like dude. on both sides so of things, stupid. on both sides of things, everybody acted so stupid, so dumb. and then and nobody's ready to take accountability and yes. say I'm I acted, yes. I shouldn't have been forcing my friends to get the vaccine, and the other people should I shouldn't have called my friends idiots for getting it, you yes. know what I mean, or what yes. like like nobody's willing to just be the first one to be like I'm sorry. That's where we're at. <laughs> That's where we're at. Yeah, but you guys made it through, which is kind of impressive. I feel like because. How many people would have been like, all right, maybe it's just the universe doesn't want us to have a restaurant? You know oh, what I mean? No. Or, or like, like, I've never felt that way. Right, right. I know you haven't, but it's like, how many people would have caved to that amount of like, I, you know, you don't really want to call it failure, but it's like when it you it feels I've been there where you're working on business deals, you're working, you're trying to, you're on the phone with this guy, you're talking to the bank guy, you're trying to get yeah. the money guy, you're trying to get the location. I, I've been there, and it's like when it when it falls through, you're just like fuck. That was yeah. a year of talking and bullshitting and showing the plans and showing the the ROI and showing the mm -hmm. fixed expenses and the variable. And you're and it's a year of that basically down the toilet. You could still use that and yeah. take it to the next guy, and now you have that experience, which is good. But it's like it's hard to like want to keep going. Mm -hmm. But you just yeah. you guys just are we're tunnel vision. For yeah. seven years, like, we, this will be a fucking restaurant one day. And people are going to come in here, and we're going to be able to cook whatever we want. And yeah. we're going to be able to seat 100 people, and it's going to be banging. Yeah, we have specific ideas about what we want as far as goals, you know, within our group. With I mean, m me, I'm like, I need to make people understand that barbecue is a lot more than whatever you kind of, like, small box that you think it is. Like yeah. Whatever you put it in. And I think the best way to do that is with a restaurant because that, I think, speaks louder than, like, some content or it speaks louder than a book. I think those things are supportive of that mission. They get people in the door. The mission. Yeah. Um, and it can't just be an average, like, like, it has to be really good. If that is the thesis, then, like, it has to be excellent in order to do that. And yeah. so that's kind of the point every day is to – Try to be different and try to be the best. To wake up and piss excellence. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> no, that. <I'm> just <laughs> it's I mean, it's a struggle every day. Yeah. Especially with this new place, you know, transitioning to new space, new people, new food, new everything, um, new systems, uh, new roles for everybody. So it's been challenging, but everybody's been absolutely hitting one thousand. What's it like to have that that freedom now? For you specifically, being the yeah. being the being like the chef mastermind, if you will, behind everything that happens in the kitchen, or like mm -hmm. at least I mean, you know, you you give a lot. I think you give a lot of the staff room to experiment and hey, look, try this dish I made. Yeah. Can we work this in? And but but for the most part, you're you're the you're the bottom line when it comes to what's going on the menu. Mm -hmm. And you've I feel like you've been running with weights on, yeah, so to speak, yeah. being in the truck. For sure. Like you've just been thinking and stewing. When I get that kitchen, mm -hmm. when I get that, when I get that, wood, yeah. when I get that wood fire grill, I'm yeah. gonna fucking tear yeah. up. I'm gonna cut a whole cow. 
up on the, in there, and I'm gonna butcher a whole cow, and I'm gonna serve giant porterhouse steaks. What I'm do gonna you do think crazy I did shit. right before I came here today? <laughs> <laughs> Butchered a cow, dude. That's exactly what I did. That's there. amazing. Yeah, and that's it's like so. What's it like to be to go from running with weights on like in the truck, confined to what you can fit on there, what you can move from the commissary kitchen without mm-hmm. it going bad, to now you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You know, what I've discovered is that there are still constraints. We only have one fryer. You know, you, pe- mm. people can, you know, we can only serve so many people a day. And now the onion rings are Yeah, are the menu's only famous. so, like, can only be so big. And right now it's really big. Yeah. So, like... Like, right now, we can't put anything else on there. And if Dang. we do, like, it has to be, like... Sawyer's like, dude, come on, it has pump the brakes. to, like, like, really need a place on there, um, which I think everything on the menu does, like, have a specific role that it fulfills and, like, mm-hmm. as far as, like, no waste and having everything kind of come back around um, and, like, the way that people can order in multiple different ways on the barbecue line or just from the bar, like, it, it just works. It works, and we've proven it. We've been really busy, and even when we get super, super busy, it still works, and 99% of the people are happy. It must be cool to have, like, a <clears throat> a restaurant now that you can do, like, when it is slow, you can do a happy hour. Like, you have these we- these weapons you can pull out now for when it's slow versus, like, you didn't have as much control at the truck. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you're like... You're like, oh, it's slow. We're kind of relying on. We're at mercy of the weather. Now we now we have AC. We have a giant building with yeah. AC. Really, we're just learning a lot right now. It's yeah. a completely new building. Like it's it's a just it's a new project. So we are kind of back to square one with uh, with redoing all of our systems. With seeing how the summer is going to affect us being inside of a building versus inside of a food truck. It's like being a. It's like graduating from high school and being a freshman in college or something. Yes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh shit! Now we're at the now we're now we're starting uh, we're starting a new thing now yeah. where we're the we were up here yeah and in, in experience level and now we're now we're back to square one. I feel like you guys are doing just fine though. Yeah, I think I mean everything's been great so far. The new staff is amazing. I cannot say enough good things about. You hired a bunch of killers from yeah, like dude. all the best barbecue places. You half of your staff is Terry Blacks yeah. and the other half is yeah. Valentinas and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a. Yeah, we had a lot of really good people come from the current barbecue community, and a lot of people come from out of town. And yeah. um, it's it's now we also have to live up to them too, and that's a new challenge. Right. Is because people are like, yeah, I moved here completely from a different state, you know, in order to work at this place, um, and that makes me need to show up for them. And to make sure that they know that they're supported. Right. So when I need to do go do whatever else, then they can support us and be there representing us. Right. What I thought was cool, because I was at the orientation of, like, the mm-hmm. first day when the staff showed up. And <clears throat> you guys, so Sawyer was, like, doing the, you know, introduction speech. And she was just very, like, transparent. She was like, hey, guys, what's up? Welcome. It's your first day. Just want to let you guys know, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> we are, we have a food truck. Yeah, and now we have a restaurant. We're figuring the shit out together. And I felt, I feel like in that kind of moment, everybody kind of like came together, and it's like, all right, we gotta, like, that's a good way to start shit off. Yeah. Not like we're the Roy and Lewis. What's up, number five on the Texas Monthly? You know, no. act right or get or <laughs> get canned. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, figure it out or get canned. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, no, it's like we're all learning. You know what I mean? We're yeah. all going to figure this beast out together and we're going to change stuff. And if somebody has an idea, you know, speak up. And it just seems like a cool environment to work in. Yeah, you know? that's how it has to go. Um, we don't know everything. Yeah. We're figuring stuff out. Well, I think that's a humble position. I think a lot of restaurant owners kind of are like, you know, it's my way or the highway. We know everything. And I feel like you people really don't like get it and like hit their stride until they're like, Five to seven like years old that's when you have like a solid uh, like base of customers you know what to expect year over year you can look back at data and like yeah. know when you're gonna be busy know when you're gonna be slow isn't that kind of with everything too though like do you really yeah. do you really are you really good at anything until you've been doing it for five to seven years, Couple years you know, yeah. i know comics it's like yeah you know they don't even start considering you a comic until you're five to seven years in yeah so it's, it's like that ten thousand hours thing exactly you know 
which is crazy. So at Friedman's, you were like, I'm going to open a restaurant one day. Yeah, but I think before that, I wanted to do that. That's why that was the reason we moved back to Austin. I actually wanted to open a Tex-Mex barbecue place. Ooh. Is there still potential someday when this is up when this is up and running on its own? I would love that. We have a lot of different ideas for different concepts. This I think there will only ever be one Leroy and Lewis. I feel like you have to hold more. You have to hold back your Tex Mex. That like you really want to let it go at at Leroy's. Like you like you have like it sneaks out in the Chori Papas and yeah. the tacos and stuff. But you're like you're, you're like I gotta hold back. Well, this isn't a Tex Mex spot. But like if you could let loose, you know, it's a, it would go crazy. It's a restaurant in Austin, Texas. So I think it. Should be probably about fifty percent Mexican yeah. and Tex Mex yeah. food, and I'm fifty percent Mexican, so yeah. it all kind of just it makes sense. There's you, about fifty percent Mexican food. Your family makes tamales on oh yeah New Year's Eve. Is that Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve? Uh, we eat them on Christmas Eve. Okay, uh, we make them usually like the first week end of December. That's right. Okay, yeah, I've had them. They're delicious. They are delicious, and we make them for the for the restaurant or for the. Yeah, I was, you previously I, yeah. made them for the truck. Yeah, this yeah, will be we the first year. Previously made them for the truck. We'll Ooh, Christmas at the, the restaurant, restaurant, dude. Yeah, I think. I mean, we, there's potential for us to just make them before that because the ladies yeah. were saying the other day when they were um, straining all like the grease and like or all the lard uh, that we had rendered and also picking all the meat from the head. They're like, "Hey, this is for tamales." You're like, "You're making tamales with this, right?" I was like, "No, we're actually making pork hash." But good you, idea. If, if you want to make tamales, there's Corn husks and there's masa back there, yeah. so you can start making tamales if you want to make tamales. <laughs> and I will eat some of them. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. You guys do a bunch of cool shit that, like, I feel like I've noticed like a lot of restaurants because I'm I'm in restaurants taking photos and stuff, and I I don't see everybody do like the family meal thing. Really? You know what I mean? No. And can you describe kind of what that is? I know it sounds simple, but like a yeah. lot of people don't understand. Or you know, if you've seen the bear, you've you probably get it. But yeah, you know, but like, why is that important to you? Well, different restaurants do it in different ways. We could never really do it at the food truck just because everybody was kind of scattered and, like, that we didn't bring extra ingredients there. Um, you can't really cook on the truck is something that people don't understand it, with, yeah. with your guys' stuff. You're yeah. basically reheating, like, stuff. or you were, well, we you were, were cooking sausages. We're cooking burgers. We're, There's some cook-to-order stuff. Yeah. We're, I mean, we were cooking briskets and holding them the next day and then slicing those up. But there was a lot of stuff that had to be pre prepped and like yes. par cooked yeah. or whatever at the at the commissary kitchen, yes. which was how many minutes away in traffic? Like 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. right there. Okay. Um, I bet you loved getting out of that place. Yeah, we did. We did. Not that it didn't serve you well for what you needed it for, but it was nice, especially that sharing last it with year was uh, was nice. We were in the kitchen by ourselves, oh, so we'd nice. really spread out. Yeah. There was a lot of space in there. But man, to have everything under one roof now is pretty great. Pretty great. Every everything, everybody. This truck is still open. Yeah. Um. So we're still, you know, that is still like a satellite location for us now. But it's still, it's. Are you still going to use that out. to test new stuff too? Because I remember you were do basically the a lot of the specials and stuff you were doing at the truck was testing for what you would have at the brick and mortar, mm -hmm. right? The chopped cheese and stuff yeah. like that that you would do. I think we'll mostly test stuff at the restaurant. Like we really want the truck to be. Kind of like its own little satellite location, like a billboard. Uh, yeah, <laughs> or just like a like a like an extra concession kind of thing, like mm -hmm. a like a beer bar, you know, not the main bar, but like a beer bar that's kind of outside, like doing cans only right. type thing. Okay. Like it's just a it's another till in a different location that we can serve like some of the same food at that we can just like generate more revenue at. Yeah. So how many times do you think you said you said it it fell through like five times? Mm -hmm. Right. Was there any of those that you think like, man, it would have been it, we would be in a better spot now or something like if one of those didn't fall through? Is it kind of an everything happens for a reason kind of thing because you're at where you're at now and you know what you know now? And like, yeah, I think um, we would not have been set up with the staff that we have in the right way. That's like, time and place for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just the way uh, like Allison has kind of come into her role as like a, a Allison and Casey, she's as, a rock star. As, both of them, yeah. As managers and um, Cole and Matthew Bromley as um, the pit master and kitchen manager, respectively, and like all these, um, like like Clay is a super veteran and has been, mm -hmm. you know, stepping up on the barbecue line and just like it's everybody like that we had was ready to like take a step up. Yeah, yeah. And it was so it was perfect timing. Yeah.
do you look back on any of those and you're like, ooh, I'm glad like that second one didn't work out because we, yeah. we, we wouldn't have enough space. Or the, like, Yeah, the one right before COVID was supposed to be like up on Burnett, and I'm glad that I'm just not yeah. north of the river. Yeah. I'm glad that we're, <laughs> we're just in like a south. Nestled. Yeah. Perfectly. And then you guys were going to do like a brewery thing in Kyle, right? Mm-hmm. Which would have been too far, I think. Yeah, I mean, I Still think... would have worked out. I think Kyle would have been a good... Uh, I think it would have worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a big, big project. It still has potential. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, we can do some sort of brewery project in the future. Like Nathan's too good for yeah. for the world to not taste taste his beers. His beer. Yeah. And that's a whole other animal too. If you're like yeah. you're if you're trying to trying to start and open two things that you've never done at once. Yeah. Exactly. Like a restaurant and a brewery. And a brewery. It's like let's just do one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then we'll try the brewery. We'll, th- we'll work the brewery in. It's um, yeah. It was a massive, massive project. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked out the way it did, dude. Yeah, me too. The food's good. What What are some things that you want to highlight uh, and talk to people about that weren't available on the truck that yeah. you're really excited about for the new the new restaurant? So the main thing for me is got to be has got to be the flat iron. That's our main slice beef. That's kind of uh, taking the place of brisket, right? Yes. Because you guys don't do it every day. Right. We only serve brisket on Saturdays. We try to highlight other cuts. And it also just kind of swallows up all the air in the room. If people see brisket on the menu, they're just going to get it every time. Mm. They're going to judge us just based on that one thing alone. Right. And, you know, we are a fully rounded barbecue restaurant experience. You're so. like, don't come in here just to judge us on our brisket. Well, the brisket is fine, and yeah. we just want to do so many other things. I spent a lot of time of my life, a lot of my career, cooking brisket, and um, I only really want to do it once a week. Yeah, and we have just a lot more to say than that. So, um, the flat iron is kind of our answer to that. Uh, it's a sliced beef option. It has a nice salt and pepper crust, just like brisket. It has a, you know, nice rendered, tender, juicy, smoky. Delicious. I feel like it's somewhere between a slice of lean and a slice of fatty. It's like kind of, am I wrong to well, say that? It's, it's like kind um, of in between, an, an in between tenderness of like it's not, it like a lean slice of brisket can be too dry sometimes. Yeah. And then like a fatty slice can be like, if you don't like that, can be like, oh, it's like too slimy. Yeah. And then the, the I feel like the, the flat iron has this like perfect balance yes. of chew. And then a little bit of resistance. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? um, I like it a lot. It does have like two different kind of parts of it, kind of like a brisket. It has mm. a fattier part on top. It has a leaner part on bottom. And each slice, though, right? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of separated um, like in the middle by this kind of like band of tissue that breaks mm-hmm. down and gets like nice and sticky, kind of like a beef cheek. So I kind of put it in between like a beef cheek and a brisket, yeah. which is perfect for us. I I have this vision of you like when you're at home chilling, like just reading about – <laughs> meats cows and cuts like Kinda. how do you learn all this shit how do you learn that flat iron is like yeah that's do you have yeah. it somewhere um well you know in order to kind of think about what the future of barbecue can be we have to look at where it kind of came from and so we checked out like some of the older sliced beef cuts that places were using before brisket got super popular and that was a lot of like shoulder clawed um, mm-hmm. The most, you know, the biggest pieces on the animal that are, you know, boneless or semi-boneless are going to be the back leg, kind of like the rump, and then the front part, like the shoulder, which includes the chuck and the claw. Chuck is where a lot of ground beef comes from. Claw is uh, just like a big, like almost like 20-pound, like haunch of meat. So it's something they just used to throw on there, you know, cook it till it was like a sliceable kind of tender texture. And then that would be like a lean sliced beef. And then brisket would be like a fatty sliced beef. That was the original, like lean and fatty. Okay. So we started using, you know, looking back at what they used to do and then using kind of butchery or our knowledge of butchery and also kind of modern techniques of like how we would trim a brisket and like making sure it has a nice fat cap and rounded for the smoker. And then we seasoned it really well. And then we smoked it and paid really close attention to like you know the tips and like we put it in the foil boat and made sure it was nice and tender and cooked it a bunch of different ones to the perfect temp, uh, tenderness and texture and we finally landed on the technique of how like many how do you think you this. went through to get there 
I mean, I think we we probably did it a dozen or more times yeah. um, of like different, you know, cook the piece whole, then cook the each individual piece, and then cook it to this temperature, and then to that temperature, and then to this rub, and then to that rub, and then like this is the resting, and then like There's many, many so different much, things. so much to nerd out about. So yeah. many variables to yeah. try to control yeah. on that shit. It's crazy, yeah. crazy amount of experimentation. Wow. Yeah. Um, So what do you think that you've learned <clears throat> since you opened the brick and mortar? I guess let's start with what is what are some of the key differences of like running a truck versus running a a big cuz I bet you there's a lot of people that have a truck right now. Yeah. That are like, "Man, if I only had a brick and mortar, like we need a brick and mortar. We need to be lo-. and maybe they're not ready or like they don't they think that they could just copy and paste, right? Like that's kind of I I think a lot of people probably think, "Oh, you just you just add, you know, X amount to your pars mm-hmm. or you yeah. or and you're we're gonna need this much more staff and we can easily run we we run a truck good for two or three years. We know how to run a truck. Let's you know, we could easily bring this into a brick and mortar. And it's like yeah. well, I don't know. <laughs> I would I don't say know how easy yeah, it is. I would say two things. Uh the first thing is that you're dealing with much larger numbers. So there's a lot more at stake in a food truck you know in a restaurant than a food truck it's like larger like, expenses yeah numbers you know if it's a bad day you're losing a lot more than mm. in a restaurant than you would be in a food truck and that is because there's a lot more people and that's the main thing is that there's a lot more people hands on there's deck a lot more people to manage there's a lot more people to look after there's a lot more people to just make sure that they are being happy being fulfilled you know, fulfilling their duty and task or whatever they're supposed to do in a correct way. Um, I think that's the main thing is that there's more people and it's more relationships you know, to manage. Yeah. There's more people on the team. The team yeah. just grew enormously. And so we have to have like, from like how many people to how many people? It went from like 15 to 50. <sighs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's a huge jump. Yeah. And then, and so there's also financial. Like there's there's financial responsibility that comes with that too, right Big out of the, right out of the gate, yeah. right out of the gate. Yeah, you know we're not only you know we're responsible for everybody's like well being and family essentially. Yeah. And that's not a place where you can cut corners. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you can't you can cut cost on like let's do flat iron instead of brisket, right? right. That's a cu- that cuts cost down a little bit, right? A little bit. Yeah, and so it's like it will cuts. There's not as much loss right. from what I understand, yeah. right? And so. It's uh, I know way too I know way too much about this stuff now. <laughs> it's hang, hanging around with you barbecue guys, yeah. But yeah, it's like there's, there, but there's there's things that you can't cut corners on, which I bet you people when they open a restaurant, whether they're coming from a truck or not, they're trying to like, well, do we really need fifty? Yeah. Can we get away with with forty? Yeah, because yeah. that would really. But it's like you need that those extra people. People need days off and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah it's. It's really hard to keep everybody happy, get everybody enough hours, get you know, get everybody's yeah. schedule enough days off. Enough people days want off. to go to the show on this day or whatever. They need to request a day off. Yeah, we get more people uh, wanting to work even more. Yeah, yeah. Like Matias over here. Yeah, yeah. he's a he's a work hound. He's the best. He is the best. He's a killer on the yeah. line. He is. I brought I brought him brought him I brought him down here for you, dude. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. He'll never be Pat, you but you know, he can aspire. No, yeah. but Pat, uh Pat's coming down Pat's for coming back. For a little pop up. Yeah. Shout out Pat. We miss you, Pat. We miss love you, buddy. Yeah, we love you, Pat. We all love you. Um But yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. That'll be fun. That'll so he's be doing a, a doing a cla- are we allowed to talk about it yet or no? Can yeah. We talk about it? He's doing they're gonna do the classic Barbecue pop up, right? Yeah, With old Cole's school. Cole's old school sausage. Yeah. Let's go. It's my favorite sausage, dude. Yeah. It's so good. We gotta get Cole in here too. Yeah. We gotta get Cole in that here just cool. riffing. He's a talker. Oh dude. That boy's <laughs> got jokes for days. I've been trying to get Cole to do stand up. Like, dude, <laughs> one of these nights you're not at the you're not at the the restaurant. You gotta come you gotta come talk some shit. Yeah, you know he's funny as hell. I, I think uh I I've always thought that I could just like collect a couple different just ridiculous stories about what people have done in service situations and just tell those stories and that's it you just, should and that's it just you should come like, come with me can one you time. believe this lady one time just acted like this tell me a couple like- right now you got any off the dome any yeah. do you have a couple funny service stories from when you're yeah 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 this one uh woman came up one time and she was like trying to order some food and i was working the 
the POS. So I wasn't wor- I wasn't cutting barbecue. Was know. this at the truck? This was at the truck. Okay. Yeah. Um, and she was holding a like leash, uh, and she was holding her little tiny dog, Yorkie too. type dog. Yeah. And she ordered maybe a burger, a barbacado, or something. Um, and she and this was during COVID. This was this was during COVID. <laughs> she had a mask on. <laughs> had, I don't know. I don't know if she had a mask on or not. And uh, I told her the total, and she like had to put the dog down. At first, she put the dog on the table that we had in front of the. And so, Gross. Uh, Come on, so lady. that was that was gross and strange enough. But then uh, she like was trying to look through her purse with like one hand, and then like hand tried to hand me the other at leash, uh, like to hold it so she could look through her purse <laughs> with the other two with two hands. And I was just like, yeah, uh, uh, I'm touching food. I don't think I can touch. I don't think that's really safe for me to touch that. And can <laughs> like, you get your then, dog off the table yeah, that she, we have the silverware so on? Pissed, dude. She was just like, oh, oh, my God. I can't believe you. And I was like, what? I just don't think that's I don't want to touch safe. your nasty yeah. dog leash, lady. <laughs> she handed you yeah. a dog leash through the window. Of Here you the, go. Hold uh, this for me, please. You're in the window of the food truck. Yeah. And she's handing you a disgusting dog leash. It's okay. Oh, it's all right. That's all right. She, at least she wasn't. That it was a tough it. time. Everybody, you know, every, it was <laughs> a was tough confused. time for everyone. Yeah. They didn't really know how to act. And I was, you know, just try to give everybody grace mm-hmm. during COVID. Yeah. Any other, do you have any other ones from like when you were working at Freedman's or anything that sticks out? Like what is the, what is the rudest a customer's ever been to you? Oh, well, Freedman's was on West Campus at UT. So there oh. were just kids in there all the time. Just hammered. Just hammered drunk. And also just around the whole area, um, especially during Roundup, which was like this crazy fraternity and sorority recruiting event. Mm-hmm. And there were actually like high school kids in the area. Like when I was in high school, I went to UT Roundup and it was a like wild. It's experience. like where high schoolers went to get drunk and party. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're like, bro, you got to come and rush this frat next year. Uh, <laughs> like that's the, what it's for. Uh, and so, yeah, that was a crazy situation. This guy uh, walked in one time. Just with a Coors Light, and the host was like, "Hey, you can't like have that." And he just like standing in the front, he just like ch- like ch- chugged it, and then literally threw it behind him, like onto the porch, and just like walked right in. It's the- like, yeah, let me get a. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was wild. Oh, well, well, don't bring campus. that energy into Leroy and Lewis, please. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no white claw crushing frat boy energy. No, uh, no, it's more of a family yeah. Na- neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is cool that you can like skip the line. Sorry, I know we're jumping around, but I have there's like a lot I want to talk to you about. Yeah. We don't only have so much time, so sure. I'm like, what do I want to talk about? Uh, but it is cool that you can go in to the restaurant and you don't have to wait in the big line. And I think yeah. a lot that's still that is not like super widely known information yet. Like I know you guys have like yeah. d- done your best to push it out, but yeah. you know how hard it is to get a message across with social media and shit nowadays. But yeah. it's like you don't have to wait in the line no, you to don't have eat to. to eat a lot of the the best stuff. The best stuff. Yeah, yeah. the burger, the pork burger, the which, pro- which is one of my new favorite things on the menu. The chopped cheese, Italian beef, the pork burger, onion so, rings. The pork burger is so swaggy. Onion the, onion the onion rings, rings are legendary. <laughs> I'm so glad I ate right before I came on. The, yeah. the last time I was starving when you were on the podcast, and we by the time we were done, we I was like, food the whole time. I was in pain, dude. I was like, I have to eat right now. Yeah. And it was like a Monday, like yeah. all all barbecues closed. Yeah, you know, what I mean? all the good barbecues closed. Yeah, pork burger and onion rings is my kind of secret cheat code. Texas Ice House vibe. Yeah, so the good. pork burgers is, is a swaggy move. It's great. Just like yeah, we have smash burger, but it's yeah. not your typical one. Well, th- that's the thing. It's because it's just really good pork. It's from yeah. you can't uh, even really tell the South difference. Texas, yeah, they're like really good pastured pigs, yeah. um, Berkshire and Red Wattle, and we grind it in house, and it's nice and fatty. Was it so was it meaty pigs? Yeah, was it you that said if you get a th- if you get a triple, it comes as a double, and if you get a triple, it tastes like pork. But if you get the double, it just no. kind of tastes like a regular smash burger. It tastes like a sing. It, so it comes as a single. Oh, okay. And if you get it as a single, it just tastes like a regular smash burger. But if you get a double, it tastes more like pork. Yeah, that's crazy. Which is fine. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see somebody order a double pork burger with bacon. Ooh, it's the triple pork burger. Yeah. It's the three little pig. Maybe <laughs> the add three, some sausage the three on little there. pigs. Oh my add God. some sausage on there too. <laughs> um. Oh, was I gonna? I was gonna ask you something. Oh yeah, so 
obviously when you were coming over from the truck to open the brick and mortar, you knew that things that there were going to be that things were going to be different. W- what went differently, or like you thought it was going to be this way, but then you got into working in the brick and mortar, and you're like, oh fuck, we can't. This that's not how we do this. Yeah, is there a couple things like that maybe that come to mind, where it's um, like. Like you had anticipate because the best you can do is go. We know what we know from the truck, yes. and we're gonna try to do the math here in our head yes. and try to understand how it's gonna work in the brick and mortar. But then, yeah. then you get in and your training wheels are on and you're working in this place and it's open and people are coming in and you're like, okay, that's not that is not work. That's not transferring over the way we thought it was going to. Yeah, the main thing was the service style. We were gonna take people's orders like at the front. And then have those go like at the front of the barbecue line where they do the cold sides, mm-hmm. and then have those like tickets go to the back, and then have that stuff be prepared. So by the end of the time they get to the end of the barbecue line, that would be ready. Mm-hmm. Um, and that didn't work right away because it was just like pulling up too many tabs and pre authorizing cards and just like big, like just bottleneck confusion, um, too. Yeah, so we a lot have, of confusion at the beginning, right? Yeah, for yeah, customers yeah. and staff, it's yeah. just like the staff kind of don't even really know what they're trying to convey, and then the customers like, "What are you saying? What? How do yeah. I get this barbecue?" Yeah, and this is also I've never been to a bar, to a a barbecue restaurant or a restaurant that has like an order, you know, tickets going. We're, yeah, that that does orders like this, right? Because you're get you're in the line and like you are at Terry Black's. Yeah, you're getting your sides and you're and you're watching the guy cut the meats and saying, "Let me get some of this and some of that." But then also somebody's working on your burger. Yeah, and your and Dude. your stuff in the back. Okay, you know what I didn't realize, which is fr- like this is like a revelation right now, and it's like blowing my mind, <laughs> and it's extremely frustrating, and I have to share it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's pretty funny. You go to Terry Black's, and uh, first of all, I like Terry Black's a lot. The beef oh, rib, yeah. incredible. Shout I'm out like, Terry Black's. Fucking great. Um, no, like, incredible that they can produce volume and quality, in, like, in that ratio. The quality never suffers. So, in Terry Black's, you go inside. What do you order first? Smack. Sides. You get Mac right away. Just not, Mac is the first thing not that even they're scooping Mac, out. Just sides. Sides. sides yeah. Sides. You sides. get the sides first. Sides first. Yeah. You get the sides first. Right. And then you go to a different counter and you get the meats. Mm-hmm. And everybody gets it. And I haven't even asked anybody that used to work with us or that, that works with us that used to work at Terry Blacks if they got any pushback on that because at our restaurant people come in and they go. Give me the meat plate with these sides, and or give me this meat first, and then they think about sides. Even though we have the sides first, also. Hmm. So, like, I need to ask them if yeah, anybody t- just orders meat first, and then they're just like, "No, you order the meat down there," because that's what we have to tell like everybody who comes in. Nobody you know, does un- that unless we're just like, "Hey, give me your sides first. They're just going to come to the counter and start ordering meats first, and then sides. Even though we're scooping sides first, and then the meats are second. It's nothing that you guys are doing is different from nothing at yeah, all. Yeah, but I but bet I bet is... that like I bet that that doesn't happen at Terry Black. Do you think it's the plate thing? Maybe I don't know. I Do think you... it's because the meats are so far away. When you get in there, there's yeah. like so much sides. So like, okay, I want that. Yeah, it's I a distinctly that. like different. But we, it's I don't know, it's different for I, us I too. It's, it's on different tables. I know, but I think because it's like, isn't it like L shaped? Like, it's yeah, like it is L shaped. You got to go that way. You're right. Huh. You know? I think it's because they see the whole thing right there, and they're like, "Oh, I just want the briskets right now." Yeah, it's uh, the, yeah, it's a direction change. I feel yeah. like the plate thing might be confusing them too, because there's nowhere. It seems like it makes it easier in theory, like just yeah. just two meats. Which meats do you want? Which sides? Yeah. But it's like that's not what people are used to. Like they're used yeah. to going up and going, "I want yeah, this and that yeah. and this," and then they go up and I want this and that and this. You're right. It is a uh, two meat plate with sides. It's not a two sides plate. Which is meat. anywhere that's the answer anywhere yeah. outside mm-hmm. of Texas, like when you go in Oregon, pretty much all we have aside from some newer you know spots, like what we've always had is like Buster's Barbecue. It's like yeah. a chain, right? Yeah, they're all plate. That's all like plate yeah. stuff. So outside of Texas, maybe it makes more sense. But it's like I think here people are used to corralling in the door and mm-hmm. they pick their sides and then they get to pick their meats and it's like. <laughs> For some reason, the plate thing so maybe wild. throws them for a loop. I don't know. But these are the kind of things we're figuring out. We're figuring shit out right now. Yeah. That's kind of what's beautiful about <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. It's kind of the fun. We if we knew everything, this shit wouldn't be fun. That's right. None of this would be fun. No. 
if we weren't t t tinkering with cameras, trying to figure out how to make this thing look as best as we could, if we weren't tinkering with meats and 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 the the lines and the how to you know that's right learn, how to figure it out, then it wouldn't be fun. Yeah, you know, we'd I mean, just be know it alls. Yeah, we'd just be bored with all our success. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hope to one day be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get there, dude. You guys are doing just fine. Thank you. Yeah, but um. So what are some other things that, that you guys are doing that having this space and the staff and mm -hmm. uh, the the room to experiment and stuff? That What are some other new things that you guys have been able to pull off? So we've been able to do some of our own kind of internal programming, been doing this like seafood series thing. We had a little catfish fry. Mm -hmm. We did a nice little special for Cinco de Mayo. We just had a crawfish boil. and then How did that go? Went great. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know about Cole's crawfish. They're yeah. very, very good. Um, then in two weeks, we're doing an oyster event uh, with some Texas-raised oysters, Texas-farmed oysters from Big Tree Oyster, Blackjack Point Oyster, both out of Rockport, Texas. Okay. Um, all local always. All local, all the time. That's, That's what we our do. thing. Yeah. Must come from Texas. I love it. Uh, and... We've also been able to, oh, we're doing a new class. We're doing uh, the next barbecue, new barbecue school barbecue university. university coming up here the first full weekend in June. Very excited about Let's that. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. For people that don't know about barbecue university, it's mm -hmm. a blast. It's, it's, it seems like fun. Like, yeah. Especially if I was like, if I had a, a home. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a home with the smoker in the back <laughs> and I was like, how do we do this? Yeah. You know what I mean? And there, I've been, I was at the last one, like, you know, taking pictures and stuff. Mm -hmm. And people just are so, so happy to be there. Yeah. And explain to people kind of what that looks like, how it yeah. works. Yeah. It's a whole weekend. So Friday is a little meet and greet, just kind of making sure everybody feels kind of comfortable within the group, kind of hearing everybody's barbecue experience, what they want to get out of the class. Saturday morning, we do a lot of trimming, beef cheek, brisket, flat iron, uh, breaking down a whole hog. And then also uh, we trim ribs, and then we kind of put everything on the smoker, have everybody watch the smoker all day. We uh, grind up some burgers and make a burger lunch for everyone. Um, and then we do some panels and then uh, kind of hang out and watch the fires and finish everything and put it in the warmers overnight. Then the next day we come back and kind of cut everything up and show them how to make a nice tray. Um, and, yeah. Everything you need to know. Everything really, you need to know. To be successful in barbecue. If you're opening up a barbecue place in yeah. South Carolina or something and you yeah. don't. Yeah. Full hands-on yeah. experience cooking most of our menu. And then also um, just, like, camaraderie, community, meeting new barbecue people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? Because I feel like those are some cards that <clears throat> a lot of chefs and, and business owners, especially in the food space, would want to kind of keep close to their chest. Well, You know it, what I mean? Yeah. People are so, like... Oh, I put I put my brisket in this in the foil the special way, and you guys, yeah. that's my way. You know, now yeah. it's you well, guys put that information it out all there. Goes back to kind of in service of that goal that I was talking about is kind of making people understand that barbecue can be a lot more than just what you think it is, and uh, the best way to do that is to teach people about it, and that's why we do a bunch of content, which obviously you've been involved mm -hmm. in. And then that's why we do uh, this kind of like more hands-on direct teaching. That's why we do different stages. Mm -hmm. That's why we try to build people up within our organization as well. It's kind of swaggy to just give it away. Yeah. To just like, oh yeah, we're yeah. not, we don't care. You can have it. Yeah. You're not gonna yeah. do what we're gonna do with it. You can have it. That's fine. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like when a comedian just drops their whole hour after they do a special and right. just like starts starts starts, starts working fresh. on the new one. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. This, they don't need it. They don't need that information. You don't. You guys. You, yeah. It's not make or break. Anyone. Exactly. Anyone can know this stuff, but mm -hmm. what we do with it is is our own thing, and what that's you do right. with it will be your own thing. That's right. That's cool. I highly urge anybody that's into the into barbecue and has the money to spend. How much does a class cost? It's pretty expensive. It's two thousand dollars for the whole weekend. Yeah. Um, but it is very much hands on experience, and we also tell everybody in the class that it doesn't end after you know class is dismissed. You know, there's a full open lines of communication with all of us to ask questions anytime to That's cool. come back and work with us at festivals anytime to come back to another class anytime i feel like that kind of weeds out some of the jokers too like you only yeah. want people there that really want to learn that yes. are like really serious about it 
Yeah, it's like a class, any other class, really. I mean, yeah, school and tuition. It and also shit. makes it so we really try to deliver big for them as well. Yeah, like you have to make it worth the full, worth the squeeze. Attention. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. How long have you guys been doing that? We did the first one in February of 2020. Like the like the, <laughs> like the last day was February 29th, 2020. Like right before yeah. COVID. Yeah, there were some guys from California being like, "Hey, I, I, th- I think this thing is." there was a there's a lot of dudes that were stoked they got they learned how to cook right before that right like right before the lockdown like yeah there was some guys just ripping briskets for yeah for for a year and a half and i think that was probably the last thing that like a bunch of them did right so it's like made this big impact and then i mean cole was in that class before he worked for you guys yeah wow you guys have like have had the craziest like in and out of like people from all over the place and like mao yeah. Shout out to Mao. Love Mao. Mao. Back in Singapore right now. Oh, is he? Yeah, is he, he coming back though? Yeah, he just okay. wanted to sort some visa stuff and visit his family. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So he he ended up going. I don't want to tell his story for him. He can come on here and talk about it if he wants. But like he came to stage, right? And learn and then was gonna go open Well he uh yeah, he came to work with us to in order to learn about barbecue. He had learned about uh, barbecue from some other place in North Carolina, and he had worked at this farm-to-table restaurant in Maine. Um, and then he worked with us from, I think, like 2017 to, no, from like 2018 to 2020. So okay. for like two years. Uh, and then he had to go back because of COVID. Right. Um, and then he started his own operation there. Um, but I think it was just like, too much i think he like he just didn't have the support he needed he just said he was happier here almost yeah. like he just felt more at home here yeah. after living here for a while or something like yeah. that was what he told me i think but and, we'll uh, have to get him on here yeah. someday oh that'd yeah fun. that'd be super fun that would be a great conversation yeah uh and then he just came back uh pretty recently and now he's here he came back here. at the right time yeah he did right when shit started popping yeah, started he's, opening up he's the best he is um, you guys also have a pretty crazy pastry program going back there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Meredith has came on from Laundrette. Uh, she's extremely, extremely talented. Uh, we still have the cheddar cheesecake on the menu. We've added a banana pudding tiramisu, which was just like a kernel of an idea, and then she kind of just executed the shit out of it. Banana pudding tiramisu. Yeah. Just, just let that one just sit. That one's it. good. It, that yeah. one's good. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Banana pudding tiramisu. Take two of my favorite things and smash them together. I've heard that a lot. Oh <laughs> man. And then the German chocolate cobbler, which is just like the warm chocolate, gooey coconut. Cold Didn't you say that the story behind cream. that was like you didn't want you like didn't want to make a cake, but you wanted a cake, or like you weren't good at making cakes or something like that, and so you wanted to like yeah I don't know because I, kinda... I remember when you made it the first time yeah. was for that event that we were shooting yeah right? yeah standing in the field which was rad that was fun uh, that was an incredible event. explain that to people real quick I mean we could talk yeah. about whatever we want on here outstanding but. in the field is a um, traveling dinner series yeah so badass that they. Yeah, they, like, collaborate with really good chefs, and they always go to, like, really cool remote locations and set up this one huge, like, winding table. Mm-hmm. Um, and the chefs come out, and they're all obviously very talented, and it's, like, a multi-course uh, situation. And there's always, like, paired with wines and drinks, and it's just a really cool dinner experience. If, if anybody yeah. ever gets a chance to go down standing in the field, go to it. It was rad. It was uh, The one that they did here was at this, like, farm. Yeah, but Bob, it was at a Bobby farm Creek. that was, like, literally right in the middle of – east austin yeah like right next to my apartment and it was like i was like how is there a farm here like i was driving to i was like there's no way there's a farm here up this street and then you go and it's like this beautiful little secluded farm and they had this long table and it was a cool moment for me to watch your uh i haven't gotten a lot i guess i have now just from going over your house and stuff for dinner but it's like i haven't i see a lot of the barbecue stuff that you cook for the restaurant And I, it was cool to see you do an unbarbecue thing. Yeah. It was like you guys had brisket in a th- in a thing yeah. to like be like, yeah, we do barbecue too, but like that's kind of our thing. But like, look at this pasta I made. <laughs> look at this like handmade yeah. cheese filled pasta that I made, yeah. which I ate until I was in pain. That was good, dude. What was that again? Uh, it was like a orecchiette with. Um, I forget exactly what I mean. It was just kind of like so cheesy. I was just yeah. eating that out. It was of, like a mac and cheese out of a, quart, yeah. out of a quart container yeah. all night. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, that's where you made that cake. Yeah, that was um, 
it was always supposed to be more of like a gooey cobbler, mm -hmm. like kind of like it is now. And that one was more. I just took a German chocolate cake recipe and like inverted it, and I was kind of. I like to take the no the idea with desserts to make it playful with like just turn it on its head and kind of be mm -hmm. something else, something fun, something different. Um, and I like the idea of having a cobbler on the menu because it's a barbecue place and German chocolate cake is kind of barbecue-y, at least like a Texas sheet cake chocolate cake thing is kind of well, bar barbecue. Well, barbecue is you're kind of German, right? Yeah, yeah, but actually the German chocolate cake is not German uh, from the country. It's like named after this lady who was, <laughs> her last name was German. It was like no way, Susan really? German, yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> a white lady yeah. from Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not German at all. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I had no idea. Um but yeah, I just kind of wanted to invert it and do something weird like that. And the buttermilk ice cream is so good; like it's a really rich dessert. So like yeah. that kind of tangy ice cream cuts through. It's very good. God, I need to come back. I need to come mm -hmm. back through and eat and film it. Film what I eat. Yeah, do it. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Um. So, any future plans for the truck or anything changing? Like. You know what I mean? Are, are, is, are we going to see another truck or anything? And any other stuff in, on the horizon? Or are you just triple focused on what you're working on right now? The truck, we are trying to make sure that it is still, like, good and operational. We're just trying right. to make sure that we make money there. And that it's not been forgotten about and that the yes. quality doesn't suffer because yeah. you're doing stuff over here at the brick and mortar. Yeah, and we have to yeah we have to give it enough attention to where it is good uh, and that it also makes money. You still have to raise your first child. Yes. <laughs> um <laughs> But no, we're just we're focused on making sure this restaurant is good. There's a new Texas Monthly list uh, a year from now, mm -hmm. um, so that's what we're focused on. Yeah, yeah. Has he been in? Daniel? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Twice. Nice. Have a good time. Uh, yeah, I think he did. Sweet. Yep. Hell yeah. Um, what are some other new things? I know we keep kind of coming back to mm -hmm. it, um, but is there other new stuff that you're excited about new stuff that's going to be on the menu at the brick and mortar that isn't on there yet like is there anything yeah. new 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 in the yeah. in the works yeah the hot new new is uh is the steak experience oh that's what it's called yeah the steak experience yeah the Leroy and Lewis steak experience yeah I think I'm gonna have to clip that from you and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and put it on a reel or ladies something. and gentlemen yeah <laughs> yes. welcome yes. to the Leroy and Lewis steak <laughs> experience 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 <laughs> yeah I like yeah. it uh so we're gonna have we're breaking down quarters of beef uh, in our kitchen every week which means what for people that don't understand uh, what that means so if you kind of like you know, stand up with your arms and legs out. That's four quarters. You're so one, right? The, if you cut yourself kind of down the middle, and then down the middle, like this is a quarter, this is a quarter. Both your of your arms and both of your yeah. Yes, and that's okay. how they would cut a beef carcass. A cow. A cow. Um, and so we get one of those every week, totaling a whole cow a month. And there are really good steaks within each of them. So we are taking out the uh, kind of porterhouses, which are going to be on the hindquarters. Can you pull up like a diagram, T, of like a cow? Which a butcher's diagram? What is it called? Yeah. Butcher's diagram or something? Sure. Uh, which, which combines uh, the New York strip and also the tenderloin. So it's a really good steak for two. Uh, we're going to cut those nice and thick. And we are going to have probably five to six of them per quarter. Uh, so 12 and 12 of ribeyes same way oh come on so if we have 24 of these steaks we're going to try to sell them on friday saturday sundays like two a day uh for the entire month uh so we'll have like a couple different reservations you can get for a steak experience You'll put uh, like a down payment. So your people are reserving steaks. It, yeah, it, this is the, how you get a reservation. This is the idea, and you can also pre-order other stuff that's on the menu that day, right? right. So this is like you can kind of skip the line. This a is bit. kind of like our version of like an omakase. Okay. Right. Okay. This is like that you, makes sense. You come in, you get sat down, you get like this special steak. You can order other stuff on the menu. Um, but it comes with like a snack board and onion rings and a salad, so you don't necessarily have to order stuff. Really good to pair with a bottle of wine, 
really good. Like if it's like two couples going on a date, like it's a perfect thing. If it's somebody's birthday, anniversary, it's or a perfect something like that. thing. Or just if you're getting the boys together and want to take like four dudes right. out and go like crank down bachelor, a big steak. bachelor dinner or something yes. like that. Yes, That's I'm, awesome. I'm hosting a bachelor party for my best friend from college here in mid July, and I'm gonna hit him with the biggest badass steak. Yeah. It's gonna be awesome. You might have to host a bachelor party for me, dude. Oh, well, let's do it. <laughs> I, I, haven't, I haven't told you congratulations in person. Oh, hell yeah. Thanks, dude. Yeah. That's, I'm very, very happy for you guys. That's dude, awesome. it was fun. She had hell no yeah. idea. No idea. I got her ass so good. Got you see her. that video? Yeah. She <laughs> thought she was taking a picture, dude. Oh, I got her so good. You know, you were good. one of the, I was already planning on doing it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, you know, we can get per, which this whole thing is, it has to be about barbecue. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just, I did want, I did want you to get a good blurb in about the restaurant. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But, um, we were talking and you were like, yeah, I'm going to go, me and Lindsay are going to go do this and that for our anniversary. And I was like, I was like, oh, cool. Like my, our anniversary is coming up soon too. And I don't even think you meant it like this, but it, and you weren't the only person that has said something like this to me, just kind of like reflexively. Yeah. But you were like, oh no, no, no. It's our real anniversary. We're married. We've been yeah, married yeah. for 10, 11 years or whatever, however long. And I was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and I was like, dang, like, dang it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, he's right. You know, there was, like, somebody else in my friend Ridley was like, yeah, our anniversary is in May. And I was like, oh, our anniversary is in May. And they're like, well, our wedding anniversary yeah. is in May. Like, it's, be, yeah, yeah. Pe yeah, people are definitely like, Eat. um, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you've been, you've been straight. fake anniversary. You've been stringing You're this right. woman along for 11 years? <laughs> Your arbitrary first date yeah. ever? No, no, no. Yeah. No, but we did. I did. Pro I proposed to her on our 11 year anniversary on the 11th. That's so awesome. So it was our golden anniversary. Yeah. She had no idea. Congrats. She you guys are gonna. Another. You guys are gonna kill. You're gonna be so happy. It was. It's awesome. It feels awesome. Yeah. It feels like a breathing new life into a already great. 100%. Thing that we had going on. Yeah. I didn't know it could feel this good. Yeah. You know, get married. Yeah. Bring back the nuclear family. Yes. Bring, bring back, back America. That's right. You know what I mean? It's morning in America. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I don't think if I would have stayed in Portland, I don't know if I would have been in the same mindset. Yeah. Like, I've thought about that, too. Yeah. It's like something about kind of being in the South mm -hmm. is like a Moving. little freshness. Yeah, yeah. And just like, it's just, there's a little bit, it's a little bit more traditional here. You yeah. know what I mean? There's less like, like just you know oh just dye your hair green and you know sleep with whoever you want forever yeah you know it's like com compared to portland yes compared, yeah. compared to the rest of texas no, no. yeah <laughs> you're right yeah. which is a good like kind of landing zone. it's a good balance yeah balance yeah, for sure but the steak experience mm -hmm. <laughs> the steak experience anyway so uh, perfect for weddings yeah. perfect for bachelors well yeah yeah perfect for whatever yeah um Comes with a bunch of like, uh, comes with a couple other sides like the onion rings and the salad and the snack board. You get to watch us put it on the pit. We're trying to get this cart to where we like bring it out and carve it table side. Jeez. Like we're trying to make it some like Vegas, some some Shit. like really cool experience. Like I want it to like these are really good animals. Like they're really well marbled. Like the quality is really good. It's raised by somebody that we know by a first name. We're cutting it in house. We're like aging it, and it's just like you got to tell the story. Yeah, we yeah. are like taking so much care with this meat that like it deserves more of just like more than doing. just people in the barbecue line. Yeah, and so, nobody's yeah. doing that exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's nobody's nobody's paying that close of attention to detail. Right. It's awesome. Give me fun, dude. I this is a random thought that I've been having ever since I went to South Padre the other weekend. There is no good food out there. There's like mm. nowhere. There's like nowhere to eat out there. Talking about in South Padre or the Valley? In South Padre and like uh, Port Aransas or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, why? Like, why is it that some places, you would think like everything is great there except for like the food. And yeah. like two, three days in, we were like, or two days in, we we had to come back home early because she had to work, and I, we were like, well, I would have liked to stay here for the beach for another day, but we would have run out of food. Yeah. Like we would have had to eat a McDonald's. There was like yeah. like I'm not gonna take an L on a seventeen dollar plate of <laughs> you know, twenty dollar plate of pasta at yeah. this place where I'm like, you know, I've seen mm -hmm. kitchen nightmares. Mm -hmm. I know what's going on back there. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Gordon Ramsay needs to go into every restaurant in, on South Padre Island. You know what I mean? It'd be he would like, be busy. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You're serving tikka masala and tikka masala. and macaroni and cheese on the same menu. What are you doing in pizza? What's going on? God, Pick one knows. thing. You know what I mean? Man.
But how, how, how would you make the food better in a place like that? This is what I've been thinking. I've just, I don't know why I've been thinking about this, but I'm like, could you get a group of people together? Could you get a grant from the city or could you, could you figure something out to like make food in an area better like that? Could you I mean, teach people in, like an educational program of like how to cook, how to, how to make barbecue? Could you do a thing out there? I think in general that would be difficult because it comes down to the people who are preparing it and the people who are eating it. Yeah. If the people who are eating it don't demand something better, uh, and the people who are preparing it, you know, are don't not, care. you know, don't care. Uh, they're not like into. They don't. Aren't, yeah. Aren't le- they're not Cole. They're right. not like Pat. They're not right. learn. How do I get better at this? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's impossible. I don't know. I don't know. Some people, you know, still see the service industry as this sort of like, um, you know, transient industry, not like a real professional career that people can like, you know, do their whole lives, uh, which it is. Um, is it only, is it only like looked at that way in a place that, like you're saying, it's kind of all coming full circle. It's like it's only, it's only as important as people will make it right exactly. so it's like the people locally have to make it yeah. an important thing yeah or a prestigious thing to yeah. be good at cooking exactly it's interesting that it's just yeah not. you have to want to do a good job for doing for the sake of doing a good job you want yeah. to have to you want a good restaurant for just the sake of like making people happy and having a good restaurant and serving good food yeah um, but if people are just like willing to accept like whatever then it doesn't matter um, I feel like you've been just kind of well, I said this on the phone to you earlier. Like we're we're in the business of making dreams come true, dude. Always. That's what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. You you opening the food truck was dream number one. Yeah. You're you're on moving on dream number two right now. Yeah. Do you is there is there still dreaming going on? Is there is there an, is there more? Constantly. Is there more? What what else is there? So I mean we have a lot of ideas for different projects, you know, hopefully yeah. we can do a brew thing eventually hopefully there's more of some kind of more tex-mex focused thing eventually Mm -hmm. hoping there's something that's more uh you know even like you know we really expanded the and loose to be this big kind of thing that can serve a lot of people it'd be cool to have a more curated experience that was like a lot smaller that we could really kind of you know what we want to do with the steak experience but on a more regular basis what does that look like like just a steakhouse kind of thing no i think it would look more of like uh just like a kind of like a country retreat where you oh. could just have like just an awesome like like a camp bar- lucy kind of thing but experience. with better food with really good food and yeah. steaks and yeah wow. That'd mm. be sick. Come That's, and stay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Or like you know, like snows is an experience. Yeah. But that with like more like hospitality touches. With some with some cozy cottages. Yeah. Because if you could if you could stay the night before snows. Yeah. That'd be pretty rad. Or after. Maybe it's a dinner. Snows for people that don't know, legendary barbecue place, hour and a half away or something, yeah. forty five minutes away from here from Austin mm-hmm. and uh, what's it called again? Lexington. Lexington, and. They're only open one day a week, Saturday, yep. right? Yep. They open at seven a.m. Yeah. People get in line Eight. at pe- people get in line at like four. Yeah. A full open bar for people in the line. At least when I went, they just have uh, coolers, like coolers full of beer. They were pouring vodka sodas when I really? went. Really? Yeah. Oh Giving them away. God. <laughs> oh yeah. My God. I had like three vodka sodas at like seven a.m. But Jeez. Bates took me. Jeez. Oh, dude, have you been in the VIP in the back? I'm sure you have. Yeah. That's fun. They yeah. take you in, a, in the cooler and, like, you're eating between the it's a good walk-ins. feeling. It's a good feeling when Clay lifts the rope for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snows is, is an experience. Yeah. But, yeah, making that more of, like, a some kind of a retreat would be super sick. Yeah. It's yeah. a good idea. Exactly. Yeah. And you guys are, you guys are kind of just – I do feel like you put, like, the customers – you teach the staff too to put like the customer's experience first. Yeah. And I think that you guys would resonate really well. Like that would resonate really well with like a stay the night kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys yeah. would be able to have the fresh towel. You guys that's would know full, you guys would know how the room needs to be. You it's get a full it's like, hospitality experience. I feel like that's what kind of what you guys are more in like even more into. Yeah. Than than food. Like the food, yeah, you have to be into the food. Yeah, we but could then like it's hold like, classes at a place like that too. Like yeah. it could be events. Like you just can't you can't stop thinking big like that. Yeah, you know, because I feel like people be like, "Oh, that's crazy." I'm just you're just a restaurant owner, dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like just 
you do your restaurant thing. It's like, no, I want to I want to get into hotel motel management. I don't even know about that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like you you got to dream big with stuff yeah. just in general. Yeah. And I I feel like a lot of people don't a lot of people put the oh, I can't do that too. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I can't do we're we're not a steakhouse. We can't do the steak experience. We just yeah. have to be a barbecue space. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, well, why not? Yeah, do something fun. Do, do something, something that do something wild yeah. that you want to do. You know? Yeah. And it, and you'll figure it out. Yeah. If it doesn't work, all right, we won't do it again. You know, or what? There's no. Yeah, or we'll find a way to make it work. Yeah. It's like this. It's like yeah. It's I want to have a podcast and talk to a bunch of cool people. And it's like, okay, well, how are you going to do that? You're going to yeah. set it up in your apartment every time? It's like, well, no, that doesn't work. Get a space. Yeah, you got to have a space. And so it's just, and it just keeps moving. Um. Well, yeah, you guys are killing it over there, man. Thank you. Yeah. Are you, uh, are you guys, what are some, some struggles that you guys have been seeing recently? We might have already covered some of them, but is it just getting people in the door? Getting, letting people know that you're open or has that been, the internet seems to kind of be doing that for you guys a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, it's still a brand new restaurant, so we are kind of like catching all the fish right now. Um, and like some, you know, some people are going to come back and they're going to love it. Some we're discovering that, or some people are discovering that like it's not like the right space for them. If they just only want brisket, if they think barbecue is just like only one thing, mm -hmm. we're going to try as hard as we can to, you know, serve them what we want. But some people will just be stubborn and they won't come back and. That's fine. There's a lot of other people who will right. come back and love our food and enjoy our food. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are kind of figuring out who is our best clientele right now. We're figuring out who, you know, like what are our busiest hours and like how to be busier during our non-busiest times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it's a brand new restaurant. We're kind of riding waves of media as well. Like we did a Fox 7 segment and we had um, like a review come out this week. You were on the so, TV? Yeah. And so that kind of like I think pushed some people to us uh, yeah. this week. It's like we're kind of gearing up for summer too. We don't know how slow it's going to be. Summer's always slow in the food truck, but we don't know how that's going to affect the restaurant. So Ooh, hopefully not at all. Yeah, we're With really the AC. trying. Yeah, we're trying to be proactive about what we think is going to happen, but then also react in an appropriate way when that stuff does happen. Yeah. Stand on top of it. You still have people coming in like, do you guys, you guys, so you don't serve barbecue? Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day. Every single every day. day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> what do you so mean wait a minute. You don't have brisket What do you today? mean? <laughs> you don't have brisket? This is a barbecue restaurant, right? Yeah. In Texas? I thought this was Texas barbecue. <laughs> Matias has heard it all. Matias has heard I it all. I get it all every day. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be like, no, sir. I, I was learning that. How difficult is that? Has that been to like educate the customer? Because I was thinking about this recently when I was extremely, thinking about extremely difficult. Yeah, I was thinking about it a lot when I was listening to John Bates like sit <coughs> in his very seat, talk about pickle and mustard seeds. And yeah. like I had a real existential crisis <laughs> yeah. when I listened to that. I was like, oh god, no! I, just he, I thought I thought you guys were talking directly to me. No, no, no. <laughs> I was just like, oh no, are we? Are we doing? Well, doing? that's the thing we all have to learn from each other a little bit, right? But and I was I was thinking about it like. Uh, kind of comparing it to my own experience with the weed industry in, in yeah. Oregon, because when that whole thing came out, the people that I was working for, when we, I was, I opened a, I helped open a dispensary in 2015, like mm -hmm. right before it went recreational. It was, a, yeah. I was opening a medical shop that was getting geared up to to open up the floodgates because yeah. they knew that October whatever was was going to be the day. Yeah, and his whole thing was like. And it was really smart. I don't want to give this guy praise because he's kind of an asshole. But uh, it, like his idea was smart was that we we're going to get everything terpene tested because the terpenes are really what the effects are. It's not about the THC. Right. It's about how much linalol is in it and how yeah. much myrcene is in it and what those terpenes do and educating those people. So he came up with this elaborate like color coding program and stuff and like little, little symbols and shit. And the whole idea, and then everyone was kind of on that. T he was probably the first, but, and I hate, again, I don't like this guy. I'm not even going to say his name. I hate to give him any credit at all. <laughs> I really, di really didn't like the guy. Terrible person. But great idea. Yeah. And everyone kind of ripped that off. I don't know oh. if it was from him or whatever, but everyone kind of started to go that route of like, look, we're going to educate the customer. 
Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, a lot of these motherfuckers don't want to be yes, educated. Yes. They want to come in and get their brisket or their 30% yeah. weed yeah. with for $5. What's the I one want, with the highest THC? I want, Zero. I want 30% for $5. I don't yeah. I don't care about Meyer, Meyer scene. What is it called? Very, very Limo. Limo. I don't care yeah. about Limo. How people. high is the THC? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> very few people who come in, uh, like, I would say over, like, 50, 55, like, really want to be like educated on it mm -hmm. like and when we do identify those people like we, we are very thankful and we like go the extra mile but there's like so many people are just like no this isn't it like but if you can just get like, him a piece of the flat iron thinking like yeah. they like they yeah. look at me like i you open this like whole I'm place an alien and there's no brisket in here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey but yes. you've you've made it work so far yeah. Is there a situation where you cave? Like, is there is there anything that would make you go, you know what? You want it? Fuck it. You got me. A brisket every day. Fine. Is we, there any situation? We did that with the potato salad. We did that mm -hmm. with the potato salad. Oh, true. You're like, I'm and already it, loosening up, guys. It, like, sucked up all the oxygen on the room. It was on it, every single plate. <gasps> We couldn't sell any chili, any hash, any refried. Oh, we couldn't sell no. any other stuff. None of the fun shit. That's and even now, better. Fuck the potato salad. Now Seriously. everything is like much more even. Like I think we sell pretty much even numbers of almost all of our sides. And people are and basically everyone's trying something new. Yeah. With that. It's something exciting That's that the they're whole not point. that they're not I'm using. To yeah. Force them to do that. So if we had brisket on the menu, everybody would get brisket. We wouldn't sell anything else. Yeah, we wouldn't sell any pork. We wouldn't sell any salt. Like I mean, wouldn't sell anything else. Right. So it's like to, <clears throat> and you, you have to go through that hard. I think. I mean, I I get frustrated in general when people like judge us and lump us in a nut, like just in just that we're only a barbecue restaurant, because we are so much more than that. And yeah. that was the whole thing, not doing this to begin with. It was like you can't judge us against these other barbecue restaurants because we are. Speaking a completely different language. I would say you guys are less of a, and I mean, and I don't mean this in a, in like a, a negative, weird way, but you're, this is what you've wanted, I think, if I understand what you want correctly, is that like you guys are less of a barbecue restaurant than you've ever been once those doors opened. Like just in the way that you're, you're very exper experimental and you're doing a bunch of different stuff. You're like, the, I think the it's, goal it's is at the to, core of what we do. So yeah. it's, it's barbecue, but so much more. Right. I think that's just that's the answer. It's yeah. barbecue, so much more. But it's just it's not it's like less of a typical barbecue spot than it's ever been. Like yeah. the truck was more of a typical barbecue spot. Like still still wasn't. Mm -hmm. But the truck le was leaning more on that side. Now that the restaurant's yeah. open, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, people kind of know how to interact with a food truck yeah. and stand in line and get there early. Like with this restaurant does I mean it does feel like a barbecue restaurant because you walk in and it smells like meat and pickles. Mm -hmm. um, but but uh, it's not like a barbecue restaurant because it's like, you know, it, it's decorated and like curated and like it's a nice experience to be in there, which is where a lot of barbecue joints is just like basically a build, shack. A, yeah, a building portable. Terry Black's looks like a barn. Yeah. You know, kind of. Like, and that's the aesthetic that, that a lot of people want that is right. good that a lot of people are looking for. But it, this is new school. But we're, I mean, this is different. Yeah, we, I have eaten so much barbecue or so into barbecue that I want a different experience. Right. I just hope that there's. It's like, okay, you don't think want that too. We're not a typical, you're saying we're not a typical barbecue restaurant. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Exactly. That's what I wanted. Yes, Thanks. I that win. Is, that's the goal. That's weird. <laughs> you're frustrated and I win. Yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> you're frustrated and I got my, I got my culinary <laughs> point across. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, and I don't think I don't think you're really making anybody that mad. Not no. anybody who matters. Not anybody who's gonna come back and spend a hundred dollars every other weekend, or you know what I mean. Like, there's a lot. I mean, even more people who are just upset. There's a lot more people who are skeptical and then get won over. Right, and it's like, man, if you can, those brisket guys, those over fifty five year old brisket guys, yeah. if you can just get a piece of flat iron in their mouth, yeah. If you know, that's probably yeah. how you're looking at it. Like, just trust. Me. I know. Just trust me. I know. Al, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just just trust me, Bob. Yeah. Just grab a slice, grab a slice of chuck in the mop sauce and just take a seat. And yeah. but you put that in you put that in your gullet and you tell me that that's not better than a piece of damn brisket that everyone has. Come yeah. on. Some people don't believe us, like which is crazy <laughs> because we're professionals. Yeah. Like we've made it this far. We've <laughs> we're lit. We're on the list, boys. Like you got to trust me. Yeah. Yeah. 
What do you think is your favorite, the thing that you're the most excited about? The steak experience, probably. Steak is very cool. I think, I mean, just the the rounded experience of the whole menu, like the drinks, just having to have our own. Oh yeah, drinks. we didn't even talk it's about incredible. the drinks yet. You yeah. guys, you get to have a bar. Is that bar. so cool? You've, yeah. I feel like you've always wanted to have a bar too. Always. And you're like, fuck yeah, now I have a bar. Yeah, we got the big red sangria. Has anybody got too drunk yet? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. You had to give everybody the boot. Any staff? Yeah. Any hanging out too late? No, Matias? So specifically. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. For the most part, the staff is, is uh, behaving themselves. They're doing an excellent job. Hell yeah. But you've had a few people. You've had to deal with being a bar owner, though. Now you've had a pe- me. Pe- no, no. But I mean, you guys have had to yeah. deal with like having a, somebody that was a little too hambone at yeah. the bar. Yeah. Staying too late. I mean, that's the nature of the business. Yeah. And that's like that's why like those training exists, and that's mm-hmm. why it's super regulated with TABC and everything. So, so you guys weren't able to get a full on, or you don't have a full on liquor license. You just you you. So you're doing some some kind of interesting things with yeah, cocktails, right? Yeah, we chose right? to yeah have a beer and wine license um, because it's uh, less of a liability. It's a let. It's uh, just the onus is not specifically on us as the server. Uh, okay. It's more on the consumer. To keep their shit together. Yes, yes. <laughs> they're like if they're like if you could if you had one too many shots that might be the bartender's problem. But if yes. you're if you're getting that drunk on Lone Stars and wine cocktails, then it's your problem. More or less. <laughs> That's crazy. Kinda. <laughs> I like it though. That's, it works. Yeah. Do you have to like control the dining room in a weird or like it's some separation if you have liquor? Is there like a weird like like the twenty one and up has to be over here? Like if you're serving actual. Liquor, um, or is it? You just have to make sure that everybody who is trained to, or who is serving alcohol, is trained to do that. Okay, is like certified by the. TV. I just didn't know if there was. I know in like Oregon, you have to have like. I I think it's regardless of whatever you're serving, you have to have like an area for it. Really? Yeah. So you huh. couldn't have like you know how in Texas and venues you'll see people take their beer at a venue and go up to the front and watch the show. Mm-hmm. You can't do that in Oregon anywhere. Whoa. Yeah. Unless it's a 21 and over show, which oh. there's not enough people. It has to be all ages. Otherwise, the show's going to fail. Yeah. Unless you're like a niche demographic, like following. You just got to go to the bar, people. slam your drink, and then go back over. Or what happens, like there's this place called the Bossa Nova Ballroom, which is a badass venue, but a big problem is that like the middle of it is the big showroom right in front of the stage. If you're the stage, I'm the floor. The bar is over here, mm-hmm. and it's in this like locked up area over here. So you kind of barely see the stage. There's like an overhang. Yeah. And you can like barely see. And then when you're playing a show there, all your friends are pretty much, your families are pretty much in the bar. Yeah. You're getting drinks. And then like it feels like nobody's watching you. Yeah. While you're performing. Because this floor is just full, has like, you know, 10, yeah. 17 year olds or whatever, or That's under right. 21, you know, that aren't drinking. So, but yeah. So in Texas, you don't have to separate it at all. Nope. Even if you had liquor, you it would just be the same setup, but it would yeah. be more expensive for you guys, or. Uh yeah, I mean we would have to like get a, go through the whole process of getting a new license. So. so you guys have had that's kind of forced you guys to be extra creative with the cocktails and stuff that you're serving there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot more kind of Michelada, sangria, wine, sake based stuff. Just no distilled spirits. Yeah. So you guys. <clears throat> That was kind of one of those things, too, like going back to like you got to dream big and, Mm -hmm. you know, like we were talking about, it's like a lot of people won't get into something or won't do something because they're like, I don't know how to do that. And I've never done that. It's not my I'm I'm Evan. I'm a barbecue guy. Mm -hmm. I've never owned a bar. I've never been a bartender. I don't know. how. I don't know if that's true, but I'm just, you know, riffing right now. But it's like. But you guys were like, we want a bar. We're going to we're going to. Assemble a team of people that know this shit really well. Yeah. We're gonna have a, a woman come in. What was her name that did the cocktail menu? She's a badass. Nicole. Nicole, yeah. We're gonna have Nicole come in, crush the cocktail menu, teach everybody how to make stuff. Yeah. Hire some badass bartenders and look at us for running a bar. But a lot of people don't, you know, I was trying I've been trying to kind of pitch ideas like that to people of like, man, I'd love to do this one day. And yeah. then I get a lot of like, well, what do you know about doing that? Yeah. It's like, dude, I'm a connector. I yeah. I can bring people together that Figure know how to do shit, and yeah. I'll put a logo to it and push it online. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And add my little flair to it, or add my ideas from the sidelines, yeah. or whatever. You know, 
But that shouldn't be a reason that, to not do something. Right. And I feel like it is for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people, the buck stops at, like, what they already know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. People got to get out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Put their faith in, like, the idea and, like, I know that I know people that can do this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can assemble the team. Yeah. I can news team assemble. Has to have have to have a good team. Yeah. Like, very few things can people do just, like, solely on their own. And it takes, yeah, that takes humility, too. Mm-hmm. That I think a lot of entrepreneurial people maybe don't have, right. where they're like, "Oh, it all has to be me. It all has to be my idea." Yeah, it's like you know, sometimes. What time is it? Right yeah, now? I just want to make sure we're good on time. Yeah, two forty. Uh, yeah, I gotta yeah, we go got like five minutes. We got to wrap this up. Let's just wrap this up right now. We can, uh, we can have you back in uh, six months, a year, and do another yeah. check in. See yeah. how stuff's going, and um, you know, thank you for coming back, Evan. Thanks Love for having you, dude. me. Love you forever. Love you, bro. You're one of my best buds out here. Ooh, that's three for three, dude. That's three for three. Uh, look into this camera and plug your stuff. Let people know what's going on event-wise, too. This will be out tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm going to – we're we're quick right now. Perfect. So come see us at Leroy and Lewis at the restaurant, 5621 Emerald Forest, Wednesday to Sunday, 11 to 9 p.m. Come see us at the food truck at 121 Pickle Road, 11 to 3 or sometimes 5. Kind of depends on how much food we have. Follow us on Instagram at Leroy and Lewis. Follow me on Instagram at Evan Leroy BBQ, right? BBQ. Evan Leroy BBQ. BBQ. And then when is the next event you guys are doing? Um, the next event is going to be Hot Luck this weekend. Ooh. I should also say subscribe to my YouTube. Subscribe to uh, the restaurant's Patreon, the restaurant's YouTube. Yeah, and then didn't you say there's an oyster thing coming up? There's an oyster event coming up uh, on June 2nd. It's going to be Sunday, June 2nd, 3 o'clock. We're going to have raw oysters and grilled oysters with Big Tree Oyster and Black Jack Point Oyster from Rockport, Texas. Badass. Thank you so much, Evan. Thank you. You guys, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Follow Evan. Support Leroy and Lewis. Check out the brick and mortar if you're in town, Mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Let's do it. You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot.